Hello, everybody. Welcome to part three of the Hathor material. Uh, we did break last week from this material because of the, the shadow work challenge we're doing on the on the channel right now. And no, I still have not listened to the series yet with Tom Kenyon, but I will get to that at some point. But today we're going to be starting with chapter three, feeling and human evolution. If you missed the first two parts before this part three, I will link those down in the description box for you. All right. This is, again, chapter three, feeling and human evolution. And this is page 43 in my book. And this is the Hathors speaking. We would like to share a concept that will greatly accelerate your evolution. It has to do with what you term feeling. For us, there is no distinction between feeling and emotion. Feeling includes the physical sensations that you experience, both the physical sensations of the sensory world and the physical sensations of the inner or subtle world. We define emotion as a combination of feelings along with the thoughts about those feelings. For instance, if the weather is cool and overcast, your feeling nature will report that particular information about the environment. Your feeling nature receives this information through your body's nervous system. In addition, your subtle body receives information, all of which translates as feeling. I spoke about this uh, last week, about how emotions come from thoughts. So that's what they're saying. It's, it's a process from your nervous system. If you happen to have a negative thought about it being cool, overcast day, then you might judge or decide this is a dreary day and you might find yourself having a depressed feeling. This occurs because you have responded judgmentally to a neutral feeling received in innocence through your feeling nature. Interestingly, someone else might really enjoy a cool overcast day and be uplifted by the very thought of it. Yes, it's interesting. So at the end of our shadow work cha challenge, you're going to have a, a practice where you go outside for 15 minutes and you try to feel the sensation of nature without judging it. So it's it's interesting that she they're talking about this when that's literally a part of our shadow work challenge coming up. And um, if you're not a part of the shadow work challenge and you want to be a part of it, it's never too late. Just email me at the address down in the description box below. True feelings are neither positive nor negative. They are simply neutral reports, a kind of barometer about what is happening in your own energy responsive and energy attuned world. Your feeling nature is attributed to a uh, is attributed of your emotional body, which is closely tied to your ka. Your emotional body is a field of energy that surrounds and interprets your physical body. So the ka is like the subtle body, the energetic body. When something activates your emotional body, it begins to vibrate in specific ratios, setting off energy flows, which stream around and through your physical body. If these flows are strong enough, for example, when a strong feeling emotion reaction occurs, then these flows can be physically felt within the tissue of your body. Yep. Thus, the stronger the feeling response, the stronger the physical sensation will be. One of the keys to the ascension process from an energetic standpoint is to allow your energy fields to open and move freely. This ability to move more energy and to master positive movement of the energy comes through cultivation of your feeling nature, which is, again, the other reason why exercise is a huge modality for shadow work. Exactly what they're saying. So that the physical body, the tissue that's controlled by the emotional body can be cleared. Your emotions have an effect on health, yes, which is being more clearly demonstrated and documented in your sciences. And there is one vital, specific, and positive renaissance that will take place when a person feels a certain kind of emotion, an emotional vibratory field called unconditional acceptance or unconditional love. And once again, I did this before I started feel filming, but once again, I'm going to ask that Michael and Gabriel and any of the beings of, of our highest good be here right now to protect this recording and protect this video, because this is really important. This sets up an intercellular res resonance that positively affects your DNA, making it stronger and helping it code information more precisely. This positive renaissance actually emerges whenever you feel the emotions of unconditional acceptance or love. Allowing the energy of unconditional acceptance and love to move through your emotional body activates a process of profound healing and balance. Allowing yourself to experience all feelings and emotions is a powerful mean 
means to move energy through your ka. What occurs for many human beings, however, is the opposite. In a difficult or challenging situation, they mentally label a difficult situation as bad and resist the resulting emotions. We stuff it down. Yes. When you resist feelings or emotions, your emotional body cannot vibrate properly and it freezes or locks up. When it is not able to move or vibrate properly, you become less aware mentally and your thoughts get fuzzy, unclear, and muddled. I think we've all been there, 100%. The life situations that arise today on your planet and the emotions they generate are actually the initiatory phase of higher consciousness leading to ascension and mastery. In the ancient temples of Egypt, an initiate on the path to higher consciousness would go through different initiations, each becoming more and more intense. Today, however, your daily life is the process of initiation. There is no place you need to go to receive initiations for you are being initiate, initiated by life wherever you are. I think we can absolutely agree on that. The key is allowing yourself to be aware of your feelings and emotional responses to situations so they can be noticed and balanced. Because your emotional body and your car are energetically connected, by strengthening your car and by bringing your emotions and feelings into full awareness, you greatly accelerate your own evolution. Your emotional body has its own resonance and moves differently than your ka because it vibrates at different frequency rates. It responds to and holds information differently. This is so important. We wish to take you through an experience. It will provide you, we hope, with an appreciation of how your emotional body holds memory and how emotional patterns are expressed so that you can rise to the place of mastery and shift out of a difficult emotional spaces more quickly. As we have said, we perceive humans as swirling, luminous, egg-shaped fields of light and sound. Example, vibration. The physical body can be seen through these swirling fields of colored lights and appear to us as shimmering galaxies of stars. Each atom is like a miniature star emanating a brilliant light, and the organs of your body are like star clusters. When your body is viewed through the swirling fields that surround you, you are quite beautiful. You are to us like a faceted diamond of light, precious and most wondrous. There is, however, something we find disturbing as we look at your vital force. Many of you are experiencing a decline in the quality of prana around and within you. This is a result of many factors, some of which are beyond your control to affect. So it is even more vital that you attend to the nurturance and elevation of your ka, which um, last week we spoke about Molabunda heavenly, and that is the locking in of the bundas, the holding in of the energy to keep the prana within you and not coming out of you. Freeing up your feeling nature will be a, a positive effect upon your vitality too. So let's turn our attention here in greater detail. We wish to offer two explorations that will allow you to explore your emotional body's nature with greater understanding. The first exploration concerns how your emotional body holds the memory and the energy pattern of a feeling. The second exploration will reveal how your emotional body responds to high coherency vibration, specifically the feeling that we refer to as unconditional acceptance or unconditional love. Exploration one. Begin the first exploration by sitting comfortably or lying down. So if you're watching right now and you want me to talk you through this, go ahead and pause the video and get yourself comfortable. Lie down or sitting up against the wall and then press play again and just let me talk you through this. When you are comfortably seated, recall a positive emotional response to a situation in your past. For some persons, it may be necessary to recall the actual situation so they can retrieve the emotion. When you have retrieved the emotion, let the situation drop away and notice where you sense the energy of the motion in the body. If you don't sense the energy of the emotion, then you haven't chosen a feeling that is strong enough to create a response in your energy system or your awareness. If this is the case, then choose something more vivid, something more obvious and stronger. When you have identified the emotion, retrieve it and sense it you will be able to feel its location somewhere in your physical body. It is also possible to sense the energy somewhere in the space around your body, but for most persons, it will usually be felt somewhere within the physical body. Wherever you sense the emotions, be aware of it. Sense its pattern, 
how large the pattern is, the feeling or the physical sensation of the energy, since the speed at which it is pulsing. Notice whether it is pulsing forward or backward, side to side, and whether it is moving at all. Be aware of all the various physical characteristics of this emotion and where they are located in your body. Next, we ask that you go back and retrieve another feeling from another situation, a different feeling. As you recall this feeling, notice where it is in your body, where it is located, the intensity of the pulsating rate, and where it is moving. Is it pulsating right to left, front to back, or the reverse of these? Identify all the different characteristics you can and specifically notice where the feeling energy is located. We suggest that you go through this process with various emotions such as joy, anger, fear, love, peace, etc. So you can discover precisely where in your emotional body you hold these specific patterns. Many humans are regrettably disconnected from an awareness of their feelings and emotions through childhood training and cultural conditioning. They are not taught to be sensitive to emotions or feelings that arise. They are often completely unaware of their feelings and emotions thus floating off into their mental body, not aware of the physical sensation that emerge when feelings and emotions occur. This is most unfortunate since they are cutting off a major form of information about themselves and in their world. Impulses from the subtle realms of consciousness are received first through the feeling nature and only later, later are they interpreted by thought and language. Those who stay up in their heads are depriving themselves of a more direct experience of the world and in their place. Yes, you have to descend into your human body and feel everything. Again, this is another reason why physical exercise is so important to this process. When you are too mental, you can out, act out a feeling that you are not aware of. And when this occurs, the feeling becomes unconscious. This is the antithesis of spiritual evolution. It is essential to train yourself to be aware of your feelings and emotions. It is equally essential to notice where these feelings and emotional energies move in your body. Where do they pulse? How intense and in what direction is that pulse? For some readers, this may be quite elementary. While for some others, this is revolutionary idea. Whether you are advanced or a beginner, awareness is always the first step. We suggest that you move through many emotions, including what you would term positive and negative emotions, so you can sense where negative emotions pulsate, what they feel like, and then where positive emotions pulsate and what they feel like. We perceive our emotional bodies as a luminous egg-shaped energy field of suspended particles of light billions and billions of tiny particles of light. While some of these light particles can be quite dark, others can be brilliant hues and colors. These colors identify the quality of feeling and emotion. When you experience despair, for example, there's an activation of light particles that hold the emotion memory pattern of despair, that negative response in place until it's changed. If you experience joy or ecstasy, however, there is another color brand that emerges and other particles hold that frequency or, frequency or activated. There is a tendency for certain physical body areas to hold particular patterns of emotion. You may experience sadness or joy in the heart area, for instance, whereas you might experience fear or anger through the entire body, especially its periphery. It varies from person to person. For many humans, the emotions of sadness and grief are experienced in the chest area first, then in the area of the face, which responds to those heartfelt, painful emotions, causing a feeling of pulling down. People often want to cry when energies are pulling down from the face and the eyes because that is a release. But the actual pattern of sadness will often be in the heart and in the lung area. In the same way, the feeling of joy is felt through the heart center. The feeling of compassion is also felt through the heart center. However, the feeling of ecstasy is a cellular occurrence that permeates the entire body. When you are in ecstasy and bliss, the ka begins to vibrate at a very fast rate. The harmonics open in such a way as to stimulate the brain and central nervous system, especially the neurotransmitters, which begin to stimulate the cells into a feeling of ecstasy and bliss. This then becomes a full body sensation and animates throughout the entire body in every cell. This feeling of excitation is, is distinctly different from the feeling of anger, which moves through the peripheral area of the body just under the skin, often moving into the arms or legs and sometimes causing a desire to hit or kick. Hence why I had you do kickboxing. 
<laughs> the feeling of fear or terror is also right below the surface of the skin, and this fear energy can engulf the body from head to toe. It is as if you are totally engulfed in the fear, which is why, from the energetic standpoint, fear is such a difficult emotion for humans. Since it involves the influences, since it involves and influences the full body, it can override other processes such as clear thinking. From our understanding, humans respond from either love or fear. You can respond with love or you can respond with fear in any given situation. And your response is a personal choice, though it may, this may be difficult to understand. The positive choice of love may not seem possible in a difficult moment because the energy pattern of your emotional body can override your mental body and your ability to choose consciously. If you work with your ka in the midst of difficult emotional states, you can transmute those emotions quite quickly. The solution goes back to the central column or pranic tube, shashumna, up the spine, base is molabunda. When you experience an intense, difficult emotional feeling, first identify where it is located in your body because you will need that reference point. Then you shift your awareness to your ka and your pranic tube. Hold your awareness in the center of the tube that goes right through the middle of your body. In other words, your awareness shifts to the central line of your ka. Your emotional body will then begin to shift, and as difficult emotion begins to oscillate, with the stability of the pranic tube, it, the emotion, will become more and more subtle, more manageable. As an analogy, consider those toys you call tops, which children play with and spin. I don't think Tom Kenyon knows or the Hathors know. We don't really play, kids don't play with that much anymore. But they're the spinning tops, right? The spinning tops before ele electronics were invented. Tops have a central column of energy though it's invisible, that runs up through the middle. That's the center of balance. As long as the top is spinning with enough speed, it will stay upright. But as it loses speed, it will start to wobble, becoming unbalanced and fall over. This is very similar to the dynamics between the ka and the emotional body when you experience a negative emotion response to something. You can have a feeling that you are literally out of balance, can't you? This happens when the emotional body is spinning and vibrating in a resonance that is out of balance. However, if you locate where that sensation in, is in your body and at the same time link your awareness to your pranic tube, your emotional body will come back into balance very, very quickly. In one sense, the difference between feeling and emotion is somatic. But in another sense, it's important for us to make this distinction. For instance, when you have a feeling response towards someone with your feeling nature, when you nature you then might think oh i love this person or i appreciate that person or i have compassion for that person what has happened is that you have used thought you have used language to identify what you were originally feeling as a non-verbal energetic experience this labeling or the very fact that you can say what it is you are feeling is a phenomenon that must occur in the mental body the mental body has reflected the energy and then used language to create a tag for it so you can recognize what it is that you experienced both the mental bodies are fully activated in young children usually after about seven years of age and especially before they have language skills they have all kinds of feelings that move through their being but they have no way to know what they are in the term of language and they do not label them as good or bad unless they are taught such judgments feelings are just part of their experience your feelings and emotions are an initiatory portals of your life. They reflect back to you where you are in relationship to the external events of your initiatory journey. However, the habit of most humans to label feelings and emotional responses to situations as good, bad, uncomfortable, difficult, and so forth does not serve them. That's what yoga tells us too. This resistance to awareness often causes them to avoid situations they find uncomfortable. Now, we are not saying that the process of labeling and identifying feelings and emotion patterns is wrong, but we are saying that if the result of labeling causes you to clamp down and prevent you from moving through an emotional experience, then that is anti-evolutionary because it locks up and freezes your energetic body. Then your caw tends to get jammed as well, depending on how intense the emotional response is. When your caw freezes up, prana does not flow in the area of your body where the emotional pattern is held. So if that emotional pattern tends to be fear and is held in the kidneys, for example, the prana cannot flow into the kidneys and you may eventually have a problem on the physical level with kidneys. Ding, 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 ding. This is what we've been exploring 
in our shadow work challenge. God works in very mysterious ways, my friends. So I think it's, it's, it's not lost on me that we're talking about this in the middle of our shadow work challenge. So I hope you guys are all taking notes because this is literally what we've been working on. Your ka is the essential and fundamental energy block. Your ka can exist even after your physical body dies for as long as several thousand years. Some of the initiatory process practices in Egypt were created to activate the ka so that the practitioner could survive his or her death consciously until he or she was able to move with full awareness and consciousness up into the higher bodies and realms of awareness. Your potential is much higher when you develop your ka because the ka supplies the building blocks, if you will, at the subtle realm for the actual physical body, the actual cells. It supplies the energies and the architecture for the mental body and the emotional body, and it also sustains the astral body. If you were to remove the ka, those subtle bodies would dissolve. If you were to dissolve the physical body, the mental and astral body, but the ka was strong enough, the ka would remain. Exploration two, take a few moments each day and recall feelings of unconditional love or appreciation, maintaining them for a few minutes. A further help is to intermittently remember those loving feelings or feelings of appreciation at various times throughout the day. Intensify these feelings so that your emotional body vibrates in response. It is a wonderful, pleasurable experience and it will strengthen your ability to hold coherent emotion, which is crucial as you move into the higher dimensionals of spirals chapter four the fear of opening humans are a fascinating group of beings for many reasons one characteristic that we find most intriguing is what you want most you fear the most let me reread that because that was very profound humans are a fascinating group of beings for many reasons one characteristic that we find most intriguing is what you want most you fear the most yep let that sink in. What you want most, you fear the most. So opening into a greater reality, greater emotional freedom, and greater spiritual awareness is both a yearning and a fear. This fear of opening to heart love is rooted in many different causes, some of which, quite frankly, develop from how you have been raised as children. In our culture, half our children are given a much greater reign of freedom than yours. They are given an understanding of their boundaries, what they are allowed and what they are not allowed. But within those boundaries, they are given tremendous freedom. Because many humans have a negative experiences imprinted within their emotional and mental bodies during early childhood, when their energies are forced to bend to the will of the adult around them, freedom becomes a source of fear. Yep. We have chosen to communicate our thoughts about the human fear of opening to love because from our perspective, the doorway to accelerated evolution and growth lies in what you call feelings. We note that as humans open up to a deeper feelings, there is also a powerful tendency for many people to hold back and to fear that very process. I'm actually in the shadow work challenge. There's one day where I ask you in journaling, what scares you the most about you? Okay, let's read that again. We note that as humans open up to deeper feelings, there is also a powerful tendency for many people to hold back and to fear that very process. So we wish to describe to you how feelings more energetically, so we wish to describe to you how feelings move energetically, how they affect the subtle bodies and to offer some suggestions on how to let this process safely unfold. For it is through this process of opening to feelings that your greatest strides in evolution and awareness will occur. Your subtle body resonates to different specific frequencies. And as stated earlier, your emotional body is very connected to your ka. Your ka, your life force, and your emotional body are very closely intertwined. If you allow yourself to experience deep feelings, then you are allowing your ka to vibrate. By this, we do not mean becoming hysterical, over -vo volatile, or over emotional. We simply mean that the capacity to feel deeply, whether it is expressed or not, allows your ka to vibrate more freely. The organization of the chakras is related to what you would call levels of perception. And in this regard, the heart chakra is at the middle point between the lower and upper chakra. This is why many refer, many refer to it as the great transformer. 
It is the sensual sun of the body, and it is the cantilever from which all the movement takes place energetically into wholeness and into higher states of consciousness. The heart sensual is petal-like, but all the different chakras literally have an energetic structure in the subtle realm that is much like a flower. Whenever the flower of the heart opens, there is an increase in feelings. So as you experience more feeling, the petal of your heart open and extends themselves. As you feel less and less emotion, becoming more withdrawn and less attuned to your own feelings, these petals tend to close up. Every person has a limit regarding to what he or she is comfortable with in terms of openness and the depths of feeling that he or she will allow himself or herself to experience. As we have said, this has to do with his or her past conditioning. As a result of time accelerated upon your planet, you are experiencing a rapid increase in the number of events in a shorter and shorter duration of time. There are consequently more and more reactions, more emotional and feeling situations than ever before. There are actually opportunities for accelerated growth. Yes, as we've been saying, this is an opportunity. All this friction we have going on right now in the macro is a reflection of the friction in the micro. And that friction is offering you an opportunity. However, if you are not comfortable with feelings you have within you and the depths of feelings that arise, then you may actually attempt to block the process or slow it down. Yet this is very power of, yet this very power of emotion or feeling that you are experience is moment to moment life, is the food and the fuel which is moving into your higher states of consciousness. We have said it before and we will say it again. Because your earth is moving into higher consciousness octave, time is speeding up. More events and experiences are occurring in shorter durations of time, creating more feelings and more emotional reactions. Understand clearly that these are opportunities for accelerated growth and evolution if you accept them. If you re reject the experiences, if you re reject your own emotional feeling reaction and polarize them into blame, then you have missed the point. A lot of truthers miss the point. Blaming a situation or someone else for your discomfort is erroneous. Your feelings and emotions are reactions to situations based upon your interpretation of the events. They are mirrors that allow you to energetically respond to and become aware of your own calibration to an event or experience. What we mean by this is that you are creating your reaction, your experience of an event. Whatever the event is, its ultimate nature will elude you until you understand a fundamental truth. You are the creator of your responses to all the seemingly external events. Your personal responses are a result of your own projections, your own interpretations, and ultimately, they are your own creations. For example, if you were to have four people gather together and something were to occur, you might have four different emotional experiences of that event, and each of them would be correct according to each person's perception. There would be four perceptions concerning what seems to be an objective event. We want to be absolutely clear about this. We are not saying that you are creating the external events of your life, although in some cases this is true. But your perception of life events is most definitely a personal creation. And these perceptions are based upon your beliefs, your attitudes, your intentions, your hidden agendas, and your feelings about what is occurring. Feelings give you a very clear barometer and emotions give you a very clear feedback about what you are honestly experiencing and telling yourself about the experience. If you allow yourself to experience these op with openness and acceptance, these deep feelings will create in you greater awareness. Simply stated, the emotion and the feeling energies that move through you are fuel for the fires of transmutation. Ding, ding, ding. Fuel for the fires of transmutation. Friction, 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 that fire. You can't have change without fire. That's why we talk about the yoga fever in a very physical way. When you start working with this, you tend to get a lot of low-grade fevers because your body is literally creating a fire to transmute the energy. Never fear fevers ever again. Ever again. Don't try to break them. Let them do what they need to do. Some of your fears to opening have to do with an increase of physical sensation beyond your comfort zone or familiar familiarity. When you open to a feeling, there is a greater intensity of sensation in many of your subtle bodies, including your ka and most definitely your physical form. For the uninformed, this can be alarming. Depending on your personality and the decisions you have to make about reality, as well as your place in it, 
such as, a, such as an opening, can be exhilarating or terrifying. Yet opening into a greater space of your own being leads you to a greater sense of freedom and fluidity, which is your birthright. This spiritual birthright is what your bodies are evolving to if you will just allow the process to proceed. Trust the process. Yes, the fear of opening comes from many levels so complex that we could spend the entire book dis discussing these complexities. And yet we prefer to be very practical in our sharing rather than discussing all the difficult complexities of your situation. Consequently, we will focus on giving you tools for loosening the emotional uh, straggle hold on your freedom and on your awareness. We now give you a most simple exercise that will allow your heart center to open and permit you to experience a great depth of feeling. Like all the tools we have given, it may seem deceptively simple, but we have found that the most powerful things in life are often the most simple in nature. Self-mastery exercise number four. Move your awareness into your heart chakra in the center of your chest. Holding your awareness in your heart center, simultaneously draw terrestrial prana up from the earth into your heart center, while you also draw celestial prana down from the space above your head, letting the terrestrial and the celestial prana circulate through your heart center on the exhale. Here is the diagram, guys, in the book. Imagine and feel the heavenly and earthly energies moving into your heart with each inhale. If you wish to visualize a flower opening in the region of your heart chakra, that is okay, but that is not the goal. The goal is to actually feel your heart chakra open like the blossom of a flower. Sense, imagine, and feel your heart chakra opening larger and larger so that your heart center opens as wide as your chest. Let the edges of your heart chakra extend further and further as far as you are comfortable in letting it open. Then pause and rest with your awareness in this open flower of the heart center for several minutes. Allow yourself to sense clearly the feelings and emotions that are arising within you. This simple exercise activates both your emotional body and your cough. As your emotional body becomes activated, it sets up a resonance within your cough. And as you feel your heart center opening, you are creating an electromagnetic opening in your heart chakra. Once this happens, you will feel physical sensations and movements of energy in a gentle way so that your personality can become more accustomed to the feeling of being open. It's simply a matter of becoming accustomed to the feelings of being open-hearted instead of being closed down. As you practice this simple method over time, you will find your ability to open your heart is greatly increasing and your fear of opening greatly diminishing. We strongly urge you to develop your ability to imagine a flower in the center of your chest, its petals opening larger and larger because as you imagine your heart chakra opening like a blossom, your actual heart center will respond to this image that you are holding in your mind. As you hold the image of this flower opening in your imagination, you create a resonance within the subtle structure of your heart chakra. We recommend that you practice this exercise in situations where you feel safe and comfortable not in situations where you feel uncomfortable or untrusting. It is quite nice to do this exercise with friends or loved ones, with your pets, or by yourself in a beautiful nature environment. As you continue to work with self-mastery exercises, you may find yourself experiencing positive feelings more deeply than ever before. Let tears of joy flow if you feel them, as they are expressions of your soul's deep desire to be expressed. The fear of opening traces back to many levels, but is ultimately the fear of opening to a greater space. For as you move into a greater space, you may simultaneously feel more vulnerable, even though by opening you are more able to enter higher states of consciousness. Obviously, if you have issues with being seen or being vulnerable, moving into a greater sense of space can be an experience as threatening, but the space holds many treasures. This simple exercise of opening an imaginary flower in the center of your chest can do wonders for any lingering reluctance you may have to open it. It can assist you to become more sensitive to sensing your own depths. And as we have said again and again, feeling is both the fuel for transmutation and the food for evolution and growth.